Welcome to the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast with your host, Breakup Bestie, aka me, Kendra. Breakups are hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Each week, I will be taking you through a different topic as it relates to breaking up, healing from heartbreak, growing in your single life, dating, and getting back into happier and healthier relationships. The goal of this show is to provide support, hope, tips, and to remind you that above all, this too shall pass. Welcome to episode 41 of the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast. I hope everyone made it through Christmas okay this year. The holidays are almost coming to a close. We are almost into a new year, thank goodness. And in 2021, I'm very excited. I'll be coming out with some new amazing products for you guys. I will also be re opening my coaching calendar for one-on-one coaching sessions. So be sure to keep an eye out for that on my Instagram and on this show. Today, I wanted to talk about myths about breakups. So there are a lot of things that we assume about breakups. There are a lot of myths that surround them. So I came up with a list of the biggest myths that I see, and I also asked you guys on my Instagram what are some misconceptions you have had about breakups, and we are going to go through those and bust some myths and clarify on some misconceptions because some of these beliefs that I'm going to be touching on can actually be really harmful to your breakup recovery. So... Let's get into them, which I'm going to start with, you know, probably the most common one that I hear a lot about is that men don't struggle with breakups. I think a lot of women assume that men get over breakups really easily. They tend to move on a lot faster. It doesn't affect them as much. But I'm here to tell you that that could not be further from the truth. Although most of my community is women. I do have a lot of male listeners. I do have a lot of male followers on Instagram, and I get messages from them all the time when they are really struggling. Men really struggle with breakups. And I think we assume that they don't because their struggles can sometimes look a lot differently than women's. Women really like to talk out their struggles. We tend to be a lot more vocal about our feelings. And Men biologically tend to deal with their pain, their feelings by themselves, and they kind of just work it out in their head and struggle through it that way. So yes, it's going to look a lot differently than how maybe you would go through a breakup, but just because someone doesn't appear to be in as much pain doesn't mean that they're not. I also think the misconception that because men tend to move on faster, it means that they didn't care, that they're not in pain. And that's also not the truth either. I actually read this really interesting research article that men tend to not really be hit with the feelings of a breakup until a few more months down the road. That's not to say that that's a blanket statement. That doesn't apply to everyone. But in general, men tend to come to terms with the breakup a little bit later on. And so it makes sense why they would jump into a new relationship because the feelings haven't necessarily hit them from the loss. And also keep in mind, and I'm going to get into this a little bit later on, but just because someone is moving on in a new relationship does not mean that they're not also still struggling with the breakup pain. So the next myth is people who initiated the breakup aren't in pain, meaning if you are the person who got dumped in your breakup, that would mean you assume that the your ex didn't have any pain that went along with it. And I can speak to this from, from personal experience. The times in my life that I have had to end relationships have not been easy at all. I mean, naturally, I'm not a confrontational person. I'm a people pleaser. So having to hurt someone by breaking up with them has always been really hard for me. But I even remember in a couple circumstances, I remember thinking like, man, I wish that they would just break up with me so I didn't have to go through this. And the times that I've had to realize that I need to break up with someone 
have not been easy. It's been really painful. It's been a decision that I thought about for a while because I wanted to make sure that I was making the right decision. So it's not without consideration. It's not without pain. It's not without thinking about it extensively that someone ends a relationship. It's not, you know, this thing where they wake up and think, oh, wow, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. I'm not in any pain about it, so I'm just going to walk away and end it. That's not how it is. And people have to end the relationship for a variety of reasons. It could be that, okay, our values just don't match. Our future plans just don't match. It doesn't mean that they don't love you and ha- like value your relationship. It just means that something didn't work out and that can that'll make anyone sad. And I hear from people a lot who message me and say, I don't feel like I have the right to be sad. I don't feel like I have the right to be angry. I don't feel like I have the right to mourn the relationship because I was the one that ended it. But they are in pain. They are hurting. And again, from my personal experience, I have sobbed after having a breakup with someone because it's not easy and because it was really painful. So don't assume that just because someone broke up with you that it means that they don't care about you, that they're not still thinking about you, that pain pain is universal in a breakup. And yes, the person who gets dumped tends to be in more pain because it wasn't their choice. But that's not to say that the person who did the dumping isn't also in pain too. So the third misconception is my breakup is different. And I'm going to explain why this is a misconception that I think is actually really harmful after going through a breakup. So, and this comes from messages I get from, you know, say one of my videos or a podcast episode and they'll say, yeah, I listened to your podcast. I listened to, I watched one of your videos, but I need to tell you about my breakup because my breakup is really different. And I'm here to tell you that yes, breakups come in all shapes, sizes, circumstances, all of those things. However, breakup pain is really, really universal. If we were to break down, if I were to talk to a hundred different people going through a breakup, and first I were to get all of their stories as to why the breakup happened, I would have a hundred different stories. If I kept digging and I you know, kept asking, okay, how does that make you feel? What are you struggling most with? I would probably get down to between five to 10 true struggles from breakups. It is a universal pain. There are universal feelings that come with a breakup. So at the end of the day, I don't believe there are many super unique breakups out there. And I'm not saying this to invalidate your experience or to tell you that you are wrong. I'm here to tell you this because if you are approaching your breakup in that it's different, no one else has experienced this, you're going to block yourself off to a lot of support. If you think your breakup is so different, you are probably not going to trust the advice and support that you're getting from your friends because you're going to assume that they don't understand you, that they can't relate to you, that they don't know how you feel, which is not true. And when it comes to seeking help from, you know, my podcast, my Instagram, my courses, if you believe your breakup is different, you are also going to block yourself off from getting the actual help that you really need. If you, you know, go to therapy and you go in with the assumption that your that your therapist has never heard this breakup story before, you're probably not going to be really trustworthy of the fact that they're going to be able to help you. And a lot of this came from when I first got sober and this is a big thing that they teach in the recovery community of your story is not unique because if I were to have gotten sober and thought, I'm the only 21-year-old who gets sober. I'm the only person that experienced the things that I did. I would not be trustworthy of anyone that was trying to help me. I would think that I was different. Your help does not apply to me. So by thinking that your breakup is different, you are essentially just blocking yourself off to the help that could really help you get over the breakup. 
And I think it's so important and that's why in my courses I have you detail your entire breakup story because that is important to work through. But it's also the most important thing to work through is digging down into those feelings of what's preventing you from feeling like you're going to be okay. What's preventing you from letting go of your ex? Those are feelings. Those aren't necessarily circumstances. So again, I don't want to invalidate anyone's feelings. I'm telling you this because I care about all of you and I really care that you ultimately are able to get over your breakup. And I know this is a huge obstacle and misconception that can prevent that. So the next misconception is if I am in a lot of pain after a breakup, it means that I should never have broken up with that person. Basically, if I still miss them, I should be with them because this is a sign from the universe. Like I wouldn't be in pain if I wasn't supposed to be with them, which is not true. And again, this misconception can be really harmful because it can prevent you from getting over them. If you believe that if you're in pain for months after a breakup, that is your person. That means you lost your person. And I've had the concept of soulmates and twin flames come up a lot recently in podcast interviews and in DMs. And I really do not believe in them. I don't believe that we only we all only get one person that we're meant to be with. I think we all have soulmates and not even soulmates. I think we all have partners that we're meant to be with at different points in our lives and we outgrow each other and we learn what we're supposed to learn from them and that there's always another person that we can love in the future. So anyways, when it comes to feeling like that, like the fact that you miss them means you're supposed to be with them, all breakups hurt, all breakups cause pain, you're going to miss the person no matter what the circumstance of the breakup was. If you lose a friend, you're going to miss them. If you lose a job, you're probably going to miss your job and your coworkers. So it's completely natural to miss something that was such a significant part of your life. However, that doesn't mean it's a grand sign from the universe that you are supposed to be with them. And I have seen this prevent so many people from actually moving forward because at at a certain point they almost want to stay in the pain of missing them because they think the more they miss them the more that means that they're supposed to be together the more justified you're going to feel in fighting for your ex back but instead if you approach it as okay I really miss my ex I'm in a lot of pain I don't like that this breakup happened but I'm going to trust that I'm moving forward for a reason. I'm also going to trust that the right person is going to walk into my life. And I'm going to accept that this is going to hurt for a period of time. But then guess what? Then it's not going to hurt anymore. You're going to be able to look back on, on your ex and not miss them in that capacity. So I did a Reels on my Instagram a couple weeks ago just about how we can misinterpret these signs that we think we get. And really what you're doing, you want to be back with your ex. So you're taking anything you can to justify that to yourself. You're you're taking these puzzle pieces and turning them into a message that you want to hear. But at the end of the day, that's just not the reality. So it's really important to, to bust that myth so you're not staying in that pain longer than you need to. If you are looking for even more help and guidance on your breakup, you can get my step-by-step healing process using my courses. No matter where you might feel stuck in your breakup, there is a course for you. If your breakup just happened and you feel completely overwhelmed by the intense feelings, you can get all the tools to get started with my breakup emergency first aid kit. If you feel like you can't stop reaching out to your ex, checking their social media, or obsessing about them, you can get all the tools and accountability you need from Detox Your Ex. If some time has passed after your breakup, but you still feel like you can't let go of it, I can help you let go of your ex using my Breakthrough Your Breakup course. 
If you feel like you might be ready to start dating again, but you're scared to get hurt again or don't trust yourself to date yet, I will give you everything you need to feel confident moving forward in my Moving On After Heartbreak course. If you want all of these things to take you from beginning to end after a breakup, you can grab my signature course, Heal Your Breakup. All of my courses include videos from me, a workbook, and my breakup journal to help you feel supported and guided through this process. Head to the link in my show notes to take the quiz and find out which course is best for you so you can start moving on, healing, and feeling happy again. Now back to the episode. Okay, so the next one is, if it was a short relationship, I shouldn't be in pain. And you can take out the word short to mean to, to be whatever matches your situation. I have people that are in a ton of pain when they they weren't even really in a committed relationship. They were in like a situationship for a long period of time. I have people that are in a ton of pain after a couple month relationship. By telling yourself that you don't deserve to feel sad, you don't deserve to mourn the relationship, you don't deserve to get the support and healing that you need you are cutting yourself off from the support that you actually do really need. I have seen relationships end after 10 years where the person can breeze through the breakup. I have seen people that get out of three-month relationships and are completely devastated. So many factors go into how you're going to feel after a relationship ends, what period you are in your life, um, how you're feeling about yourself in that moment, how your career is going, how surrounded by friends are you? There are just so – I mean, are we? In, are you in a, the middle of a global pandemic? So there are so many factors that go into it. And it's just – the key to this is you should never – here I am saying should. Really try to avoid saying the word should. I should feel this way. I should be over this. I should not be so sad. I was only with this person for a couple months. Your experience is your experience. Yes, those feelings are not fun when they come up. And it'd be great if we could just tell our brains, tell our hearts, hey, could you not freak out? I was only with this person for three months. We don't get to make those kinds of decisions. So the best thing that you can do is say, okay, I am feeling this way. I'm going to allow myself to feel this way. I'm going to seek the support that I deserve because we deserve support no matter what's going on. We deserve support when nothing is going on. So you 100% deserve it if you are in pain after whatever length of a relationship you are in. So if you are someone who doesn't feel like you deserve help, deserve support, deserve advice because your breakup or your relationship was short. I'm here to tell you that's just not true, and I really hope that you do seek the support that you need. The next one is, if the feelings were strong enough, they would have stayed. And I can apply this to a few different situations, but the big one is, say your ex broke up with you because they couldn't emotionally commit to you, and you think, well, if I was good enough, if they did really love me, then I would be enough for them to commit to. Or say your – I've been having this happen a lot in messages where your ex really suffered with addiction or alcoholism. And you think, well, if they loved me enough, they would have quit so we can make the relationship work. Or if your ex had to like move away for a job and you broke up because you couldn't do long distance, the feelings they had for me should have prevented them from moving. Those are all very common things to feel after losing someone to any of those circumstances. And again, this can be applied way across the board. But at the end of the day, it's just not true. I can speak personally to the alcoholism and addiction one. I hurt a lot of people in my life that I really loved, that I really, really loved. But at the end of the day, I had a disease. I was very sick and that prevented me from taking action to show the people that I love them. It prevented me from being able to stop. And it wasn't until I came to that conclusion on my own. And then when it comes to someone being emotionally unavailable and not being able to commit, I have talked to people on the other side of that where they say, it's just this block that I have. 
and it wouldn't matter if the person was like, if I could have a magic wand and design my dream partner, that wouldn't change my inability to commit because I have, you know, childhood stuff. I didn't have good examples for love. I have an avoidant attachment style like I talked about on the attachment styles episode. So just because someone didn't change, just because someone didn't stay, it has nothing – at the end of the day, it just doesn't have anything to do with you. And the over-personalizing that we do of that really ultimately hurts us because you're already in pain from the breakup. You're already not feeling good. And when you're doing that, if you're telling yourself, if he loved me, he would have done this. If if I was good enough, he would have done that. You're basically just taking a baseball bat and beating yourself up with it. You are making the breakup so much harder on you than it needs to be. And I'm not expecting you to just hear this and go, oh, okay, I understand. I get it. You can probably logically understand that, but it's going to take a while for that to really sink in. So what I tell people is when you're catching yourself doing that of saying, if only I had a better job, if only I was skinnier, prettier, if only I had the – like if only I was blonde or if only I was like dressed better, then they wouldn't have left. Catch yourself and say, this is not true. This is not true. That had nothing to do with me. That is fully a reflection of them and do something to distract yourself. The, the more you can like reinforce that in your head, the sooner it's going to sink in. Okay, I got two more myths that we're going to talk about. So the next one is finding someone new is the only guaranteed way to get over an ex. And this has come up a few times on um, with coaching clients where they will tell me they don't believe that they're going to feel better again until they can find someone new. And I understand this. I have been in that position before. But if you have listened to this podcast or follow me on Instagram, you know that I don't believe in that for a couple different reasons. The first one being you can't just transfer – you can't take your sadness, your pain, and then expect someone different to just swoop in and take care of it. That's not how that works. If you neglect your healing and your breakup pain and just jump into something new to make it all go away and put a giant band-aid over it, it's not going to go away. It's probably going to transfer into different dysfunctions in your new relationship, whether that be lack of trust, um, not feeling like insecurity, jealousy, all of those things until you can actually like heal the core issue. The second thing, and this is actually the more important thing, is you can't – I believe that every single person should be able to experience happiness, fulfillment, single. I truly believe that if you can take that time to figure out how to feel happy, whole, complete, on your own, not only are you going to be so much happier as a person, but you're also going to be a lot more successful in future relationships. So for me, in my marriage to Luke, Luke has had a crazy work year this year where he has worked most weekends. I mean, on top of it being a pandemic, we haven't, you know, taken any trips together and It's just been a a year for him that he really needs to focus on his work. If I had been in this position six years ago before I did learn how to love myself and love my life single, I would have been a complete and utter mess this year because I wouldn't know how to just like exist for long periods of time without having that partner constantly there. But because I have learned how to do that, I can do my own thing. I can be happy, you know, watching my own TV shows or working on my own projects. I don't have to have him around constantly. So it has made me a better partner in a marriage and it's made my relationship so much smoother because I know I'm okay on my own. So by thinking that 
you're only going to be happy by jumping into a new relationship. You are going to miss out on the full healing process, which is so transformative and so powerful. And you're going to deprive yourself of this really beautiful experience of learning how to love your life single. Okay, and then the last one, and this is in a few parts, but if my ex is doing X, Y, or Z after the breakup, that means they didn't love me. And again, you can fill in the blanks. Here are some examples that I hear a lot of. If my ex doesn't show emotion after the breakup, that means that they never really loved me. If my ex moved on quickly after the breakup, that must mean that they didn't love me. If they don't respond to messages after the breakup, that means that they don't care or they never loved me. Anything that your ex does after a breakup does not invalidate the relationship that you had. If your ex – I hear a lot like if some if their ex moves on really quickly after the breakup, it means they weren't faithful in the relationship. It means that they never – like if they loved me, how could they move on that quickly? We make up these stories and when we have these blanks because we don't know the full story, we're not in our ex's head to know – why they're not showing emotion. And at the end of the day, you shouldn't be in a position to know these things. But, you know, we all slip up. We all look on social media. We all ask our friends what's up. So, but even if you kind of know what's going on, even if you see something on social media, your friend tells you, oh yeah, your ex is with so-and-so, you don't know the full story. So you have this blank space. And when we have those blank those blanks in our heads, we're going to make up a story. And the story we make up is not going to be a good story. You're not going to think, oh, they're really struggling with the breakup and the only way that they knew how to cope was to be into a new relationship with someone else. That's probably not the story you're going to make up. You're going to make up the story of, I bet he was talking to her during our relationship. You're going to go through all of these instances in your mind of, The times, oh, that's why he took his phone into the bathroom that one time and blah, 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 blah. And you're just going to make it so muddled. You're going to make it, you're going to make up so many of these negative things in your head that it's going to take, not only are you going to have to experience the breakup, but it's also going to take away all of these probably good things that you had in the relationship. So again, anything that your ex does post breakup, I'm sorry to say, is not your business And it's also not, again, not a reflection of you or how healthy, unhealthy, happy, sad, fulfilled, not fulfilled the relationship was. So you have to make that separation. And again, this is why it's just so much better to not be in a position to know this information. Because if they don't respond to your messages, it could be that they're drawing a boundary because they don't want to make the breakup harder than it is. If they moved on so quickly, it might be because they don't know how to cope. They don't know how to – they haven't reached that point where they know how to like their life single, so they've jumped into something new. If your ex isn't showing emotion after the breakup, it could be that they don't know how to show emotion. They can only deal with emotions and feelings while they're by themselves. So there are all these – alternative things that we can bring into it to make us see it a little bit better. But again, those aren't the stories you're going to tell yourself. So the best thing to do is just leave those blanks blank. Say to yourself, I you know, I don't like that I know that he's with someone new, but I'm not going to make up a story that's going to make me feel worse. Instead, I'm just going to accept it for what it is. I'm going to not look on social media. I'm not going to compare myself to the new person. I'm just going to stay in my own lane. I'm going to stay in my own hula hoop and do my own healing. So I just covered a lot of information. I'm sure some of these applied to you. Maybe a lot of them applied to you. Maybe only a couple did. And I do foresee this being a two-part episode because I think there are, there are a lot of misconceptions about breakups, and I definitely want to equip you guys with the right information because, again, all of these that I went over, they're not just like myths that you know people have, but it's not that big of a deal. All of these are misconceptions that could can really hinder your ability to move on. So this is the last episode of 2020. I will see you guys next week in 2021, and I'll be sharing more details on how you can work with me one-on-one, some new courses that are going to be coming out. I hope everyone has a 
as happy as can be new year, a safe new year, and I will see you guys in 2021. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you loved it, I hope you'll leave me a review and share with your friends. If you're interested in learning more about my course, Heal Your Breakup, or I take you step-by-step through my entire healing process, you can find more info at my website, breakupbestie.com. And if you're new, don't forget to join our private Facebook group so you can connect with other women going through the same thing and seek support. You can search Breakup Bestie Support Group on Facebook to join. Lastly, if you're not already following me on Instagram, I share new tips and support every single day. You can find me at your breakup bestie. Most importantly, hang in there, stay connected with loved ones, be nice to yourself, and remember it's all going to be okay. I promise.